Hi, and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you can take a material model from the polyumod library that I uh, calibrate using M calibration and put it into ComSol Multiphysics and perform a complete finite element simulation within ComSol Multiphysics. So the first step is to select a material model within M calibration. I'm going to pick, in this case, the Bergstrom Boys model. I click OK. And I'll reduce the bulk modulus a little bit here. Um, just to uh, make it less, uh, give it a little bit more compressibility. To see what this uh, model looks like, I'm going to just add some virtual load cases here. Unaxial tension, six strain rates, uh, as an example. I click run once. And here are the predicted stress strain responses. Say we really like this, and now we want to put this into a simulation within ComSol Multiphysics. So to do that, I'll export this model. I will export it as a ComSol csv file i save this i'm going to save it to um, uh, this file i'm going to overwrite this file that's already here they want to replace it yes and that's our material model let's open this file i'm going to double click on it i open it with notepad plus plus and here's the material model that we exported you can see that it has uh, 13 state variables and it has this list of parameters that we exported from M calibration. So to use this in console multiphysics, I will just open a brand new window here. I'm going to go to model wizard 3D and I'm going to do a very simple a little test case here. I'm going to use the structural mechanics, solid mechanics. I'm going to add this and uh, then, once it adds it, I'm going to go to study. Here we go. I'm going to go to a time-dependent study. I'm going to say done. So what I want to simulate in this example is this dog bone shaped specimen. I'm going to pull on it to some strain. I'm going to hold it a little bit. I'm going to unload it a little bit. And I'm going to load it to even larger strains. So I'm going to set up a simulation here that does exactly that. Uh, within console multiphysics. So I'm just going to go through this from left to right here uh, in this uh, window. I'm going to think carefully about units here. So in M calibration, I actually used uh, megapascals, newtons, and uh, millimeters. So I'm going to set the uh, unit system to megapascals here. And we're going to try to keep that in mind as we work through the problem here, that the units are all consistent. Um, then I'm going to go to global parameters and I'm going to, the first thing I will actually do is to set up a function that specifies the, the, the deformation history that I want to apply to my dog bone shaped specimen. So I'm just going to call this cycles and I'm going to specify this function as follows. At time zero, I want the function value to be zero. At time one, I want the function to be uh, five millimeters, five that is, and two seconds, I'm going to keep it at five, and then I'm going to, at three seconds, I'm going to go back to two, four seconds, I'm going to go up to seven. So if I can plot this, we'll see what it looks like. So I will load it up, I will hold the, the displacement constant to let the stress relax. In this case, we have a viscoelastic material, I unload it and reload it. That's the, the function that I just applied. All right. Now, the next step is to define our material within uh, Comsol Multiphysics. So I'm going to go to materials. I'm going to right click and select um, external material. And then I'm going to call this polyumod BB. I'm going to then Select the polyumod library here. So I'm going to go to C, Program Files, and scroll down to Polymer FEM, Polyumod, Polyumod, Comsol, and I select polyumod.dll. And I open that one. That will uh, load that DLL file within Comsol Multiphysics. And then under Interface Type, I'll switch the Lagrangian interface to Polyumod. I need to change the state variable name here to, uh, I'm going to take state V, but it doesn't really matter. Then the question is, what is the state number, state variable number 
we want to use. And that is something you can find out from the exported file from M calibration. In this case, it's 13. I'm going to copy this uh, line here because we're going to need it in a minute. minute. So I'm going to change this to be 13. Here we go. And then I scroll down a little bit. And down here is a field that says material model parameters. I'm going to paste in the line that we just copied from that text file. So here now we have uh, the polyumod material definition. If I click on Lagrangian interface to polyumod, I can see these parameters here as well. Back to basic, um, I will actually insert a density here, even though we, we may not actually need it, depending how we set this up here. Density. And I'm going to, uh, since we have units of megapascal specified, it, but I, I like to specify this as 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. And if we go back to our material definition here, we see that we have the parameters we read in, we have a density given here, and that that's our start here. I'm going to now save this file just so we have it. I save it on the C temp console and call it tension. Uh, so here we go. Now, Let's define a geometry that we want to analyze. So I'm going to right click on geometry. I'm going to import a CAD file that I have. So I just going to browse to my CAD file. And here it is. It's an ASTM D638 type 5 specimen. And I will wait for Comsol to read it in. Then I'm going to build this uh, geometry here. And here it is. So this is what the specimen looks like. It's similar to my, my Tessian specimen that I was just holding up here. Now, the next step is to check the units here. This is now in meters. So this is a 60 meters long specimen. Perhaps not what we had in mind. So if we go to geometry, we can switch this to millimeters and I build all now we have a 60 millimeter a little bit more realistic I guess and I'm gonna go to solid mechanics let's left click on it and in here before we go anything else we'll see that uh, Comsol by default includes inertial terms it doesn't make sense to do inertial terms in quasi static simulations so I'm gonna switch over to that um, we have a choice of what type of elements we want to use. I'm going to just use uh, the default quadratic elements here. Um, that's good enough for our demonstration. Then under solid mechanics, I'm going to right click. I'm going to now also specify the material here, external stress strain relation. And that will give us a node uh, that we can use to specify the external material is polyumod BB. And it's going to be applied to that particular region here. So that looks good. We need to, uh, I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to apply boundary conditions. So go to solid mechanics. I right click. And I'm going to do a fixed boundary condition on the left side. So this side of the specimen I'm going to keep fixed. You see it right there. I'm going to rename this to be fix left. I'm going to rename this here, BB model. I'm going to create another boundary condition on the right side. So I'm going to rotate the specimen here. I'm going to right click on solid mechanics. I'm going to boundary uh, prescribe displacement. How about that? So I'm going to select this side of the specimen, and then I'm going to prescribe the displacement in all directions. I want to pull on it in the x direction. So now I'm going to apply a displacement on the right hand side. I need to specify the function name in this box here. So let's go back to cycles, and then we'll see uh, the definition here. The function name is int1, so we might as well change that to cycles, so it's easier to see and remember. So I'm going to keep that to be cycles. I'm going to go to prescribed boundary 
displacement. I'm going to rename this to be move right. And then in the right hand side here, just like it was cycles, I'm going to type times one to get the units correct. Here we go. So this is the dis displacement of the right hand side in millimeters. So we are applying it to, we are moving it five millimeters. And we'll see the whole length is about 60 something millimeters. So it seems like a reasonable displacement on the right hand side. Uh, I'll save this at this point. I'm going to now define the mesh. So if we go to the mesh node here, fixes, fixes controlled mesh. We need a little bit finer than that probably. So I'm going to go to finer and then I just build the mesh. It's, see that it's still a very coarse mesh, but it's good enough for what we're trying to do in this example. I'm going to go over to study. I'm going to right click on study. I'm going to show default solver. Um, then we're going to set up the solver settings here. And um, there are a few settings that I, I like to change uh, from what the defaults are. So let's go through that. So here's our study time dependent so, uh, problem is what we're trying to do. We need to specify the total time we want to simulate here. So we go to our function definition. We're simulating four seconds of time. So we go to time dependent here. I'm going to go and set the max stop time to be four to correspond to that function that we, uh, tabular function we defined. How many uh, increments do we want to do? Maybe even smaller. So it will take about 80 increments to do that. Uh, remember, when you do nonlinear problems, it's usually a good idea to have uh, more than just a few increments to solve it. Uh, so I'm using 80 in this case to get a smoother response. So that's the time dependent part here. Now we're going to go through and take a look at some of the other settings that we have here. We can look at the variables. It's always interesting. We have our state variables that are unique to the polyumod library states.stateV. Now we can look at this, the solver settings here. Um, we want a times to store. I'm going to save uh, steps taken by solvers. Sounds like a good idea. Time stepping. Um, so time stepping, I often use strict instead of the free one here. I think we can turn off the, the consistent initialization. And I think that sounds like a good enough idea. Then we go to advanced. Under advanced, everything looks good. We go to fully coupled method and termination. Um, Jacobian update uh, is better to do more frequently when you have a nonlinear material model. So I'll do once every iteration. Uh, maximum number of iterations, I'm going to increase that from 4 to 10. I think the other settings are probably good enough. Suggested di direct solver. Um, these look good. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to run this. So I clicked compute. I'm going to switch over to log. There are different ways to look at the progress of, of the simulation. I'm just going to use the log uh, file output here, which shows us what's going on during the, the calibration, this calculation. So let's just wait here and let the simulation finish. All right, um, the calculation has now finished and it ran just fine. Here, here are the results. You can see that it's been stretched out a bit. The maximum stresses are about two and a half megapascal in this rubber as we stretched it out. Um, I like to make some changes to the plot to make it more like the way I like to look at it. So I was going to do that first here. So under results, we have stress, surface, and deformation. So I'm going to right click under uh, the stress node and I'm going to add a mesh. I like to look at the mesh when I look at the results to make sure the mesh is proper. Uh, so on the mesh, I'm going to add the deformation. So on the deformation node, I'm going to have make sure the scale factor is one. And mesh itself here, I'm going to element color none. I'm going to plot this one here. 
So that looks a little better. Um, and I plotted the results. I also tried to not look at the grid. This, this, you can look at the deformed shape there, but let's maybe we can make one final um, uh, adjustment here. I'm going to click on that one. And here is our deformed part. After the simulation, we can perhaps look at units and uh, two. So here, here is a good looking graph showing the predictions of the stress uh, in the specimen after this final uh, step in the cal uh, calculation. The other thing I think will be useful to plot here is a force versus displacement trace of this. So I'm going to do that next. I'm going to right click on derived values. I'm going to integrate the reaction force on the right hand side here. So I'm going to click on uh, integration. It's a surface integration. I'm going to click on this surface here and the expression that I want to integrate. Let's select that. I'm going to go on the solid mechanics. I'm going to do reactions, the reaction force and then the X component of it. So here is our uh, quantity that I want to evaluate. So it's calculating the reaction force as a function of time for that. And it creates a table for us here. It's called table. I'm going to replot this here. The next thing I'll do is I want to extract the the displacement of an end node there. So I'm going to go to point evaluation and I'm going to select this node here you can see it there and the, the, the quantity I want to extract is a displacement magnitude will be good enough and I'm going to add this to the table one so it's, it should calculate that for us now so here's our table down here to contain these quantities. I'm going to try to create a graph now that can, contains the information in the table. So I'm going to go to results, add a 1D plot group. And uh, under the plot group, I'm going to do a table graph. I can click on this one up here. And I'll do source table 1, x-axis, I want to be a displacement plot column manual and I want to do reaction force Let's see the plot that so here is a displacement versus reaction force uh, as predicted by this finite element model so we see that it's a nonlinear response that goes up to this point once we reach a displacement of five millimeters we hold it for one second and this is the relaxation and stress that occurs in the material when we use the polyumod Bergstrom Boyce model we unload it to two millimeters then we reload it up to seven so that's the end of our demonstration here you can see that you can extract all of these viscoplastic uh, behaviors you can look at the stresses and uh, it allows you to do pretty much anything you want to do and i showed you here how you can use any of the polyumod material models in your console uh, multi-physics simulations uh, write your questions below thank you